When I first heard this young man speak, it made me look at myself and say, I need to fix up. And that's really important. Sometimes our authority figures are people who are older than us, our mentors, our teachers, our parents. But sometimes we can learn stuff from people who are younger than us, our same age, but definitely younger than us. Introduce to you, Ernest. Last night I came, I came across a guy called Ian Humphrey and he said something, it's not about the knockdown, it's about the get up. And I was, I was thinking, what, what does it mean by that? By that? I was watching a video and he said, in 1963, 1963 or 62, professional boxer Muhammad Ali got knocked, down by, got knocked down for the first time by Sonny Banks. And as the ref kind of pretend, Muhammad Ali said he looked around and he said he worked too hard to lose, so he got up brushed off his shoulders and went on to win the fight. And that day, Mohamed Ali proved to everyone that it's not about the knockdown, it's what you do after the knockdown. That's what defines who you are. And I'm sure everyone in this, in this room will agree with me that like, when I say life at time will be your sunny banks, knocking you flat on your face and leaving you with a question, what are you gonna do next? With me, my sunny banks started throwing punches at me way before I took my first step. My mom had me at 18. Then my parents left me by the age of two, then I had to stay with my granddad. Then he died, he died a couple of years later. Then I had to move in with my uncle. And with me, when something is wrong, I was sick. And with me, I'm like, even if I'm right, I'm, I'm still, even if I'm wrong, I still think I'm right. So obviously it was back and forth for them. They, they, they didn't want me. So by the age of 10, 11, 10 and 11, I had to move back with my mom. But that was a knock, that wasn't a knockdown. I was still standing. Then by the age of 12, my dad died. That didn't get to me, I didn't care about that guy. But by 13, 14, my mom got sick, yeah? And she had, she had to be put on life support for a couple of weeks. That was the knockdown for me. I went down and I stayed down. I started surrounding myself with the wrong people. All their bad habits became my bad habits quickly. Like I picked up all their bad habits, getting arrested, that not going home for weeks, spending nights in cell, that all that all those habits then I got kicked out of school, got kicked out of college, got kicked out of another college, then I got kicked out of centre. Then my mum that there's nothing worse than seeing your mum cry. Then I had that talk with my mum, that man to man talk, but yeah. Because I didn't have, <laughs> I didn't have that, that obviously she was telling me the way you that the way you like, what you're doing with your life is not gonna get you anywhere. You're just gonna end up like your friends, getting in jail or dead. I was thinking, like, I don't want to end up like that. And you know what? Like, laxing and long hair people don't do good in jail. I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, I had to switch up a bit. So I promised her that I'm going to change my life. So I thought, boom, first thing, first thing, I'm going to wrap my CV, get myself a job, that everyone's just going to leave me alone, make my mom proud. Cool. So obviously, started down. I got my CV, went out searching for a job and that. But looking for a job was that like going through hell went back. I didn't find no job for a couple months. So I thought to myself, you know what? I can give up and go back to my old self and end up like, like my friends, dead or getting job, or, end, and, and, or ending up living in one of those old dirty book blocks and living up towards a 60 pound every two weeks that job seems rubbish. Or I can like, go out, create my own job, or create my own opportunity. So I thought, you know, I might as well, I might as well give it a try. I always wanted to get into business, so I thought, you know what, I was going to stop listening to what everyone's saying, because everyone's saying, go back to college so you can go to uni, get a job. I'm thinking, it's not that easy to get a job. So I thought, boom, 16, I'm going to start my own business. Because I was 16, I thought, yeah, because you're a kid, yeah, everyone's going to help me, this, that. So I showed up to every business event, yeah. No one wanted to talk to me because I was a kid. Then I, was, I, I realized that business is business, it's strictly income. If you're not bringing really nothing to the table, no one cares. I was up and down like hours of business events, I was just there showing up, taking notes, till I met a guy called Junior. And the way I met this guy, yeah, I was on YouTube. I was just there, like, going through the videos, then I saw his name, right? It says Junior, I still don't know how to pronounce the last name. Oh, good, I don't know. Opinion. That, yeah. So I thought it was one of those Nigerian clips, those money clips. <laughs> <laughs> so I clicked on it, so I clicked on it. He was a guy that's like 21, 22, he had like five businesses seven awards, I thought, you know what, let me just reach that to him, if he replies, he replies, if he doesn't, at least I tried, if I said, I reached that to him, then he replied to me, the way I started running around my house and that, <laughs> yes, this is the stop, 
obviously sat with him, had a meeting with him, and I told him all my business plans, all everything that I wanted to do that year. And I followed him, and every, and like every talk that he'd done, I just followed him, asking him questions. But if I want to do business, what do I do? How do I start asking them same questions, just following him everywhere? And he was like one of the first persons to believe in me. And you know, when, when someone believes in you, and they put so much time and effort into you, you're scared to let them fail. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? That's like someone believes in me, I need to do something with my life. So I, just, so I locked myself in my room for like two months straight, just writing my business plans, writing my business plans, and it still wasn't working because I wanted to start delivering a removal company, but I didn't have the money to, like, to, to get a van. So I reached out to him, yeah, so I asked him, what would you do? He's like, just be the middleman. So I went to a business event, and, every, and when you go to a business event, everyone's asking, what do you do? What do you do? I was standing there thinking, don't come to me, don't come to me, don't come to me, don't come to me. Because so I didn't have a business. So everyone's asking, the guy was like, what do you do? So I started trying to pick up my phone. You know when you pick up your phone, act like you're on the phone and that. Like, yeah, what do you do? And I said, yeah, I, 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 I own a delivery company. He's like, oh, great. I, I, I'm, because I'm good, I'm, I'm good. I've got a new office, I need you to move the chairs and that. I was thinking, oh, for S sake. <laughs> then I went home. Then, I, then, then Virginia said, be the middleman. So I called the guy and said, you know what? I, I'm moving office, I need your help. He's like, yeah, I've got a van. Cool, this is how much you want to pay. Then I called the other guy. Then I was just the middle. That's what I kept on getting, doing, getting a gum tree. There's, when you go on gum tree, there's always people that's got a van and they're looking for delivery jobs. And there's always people that's got delivery jobs looking for people with a van. So I was just sitting at home and I was the middleman. They kept on doing that. Then I thought to myself, you know what? I need to do more. And obviously, mom, because I like to talk, or like, I talk a lot. Mom wanted me to be a lawyer, but obviously that's not going to happen. So I took, <laughs> on, I took on sales, that like, I know how to sell dreams. Keep talking, I just talk, talk, talk. I watched a lot of videos that like, to develop my, my selling skills now. So I started this like, sales and marketing business. So if you've got a new business and you need someone to write your sales page or teach how to sell, then yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, now after that, I thought, you know what? I want, to, I, want to, like, I want to start saying else as well. Because when you go to a business event, when they ask you, what do you do? Or if they're not doing anything, they ask you, how do I start a business? How do I start a business? Always the same question. And with me, Junior, Junior wrote a book on how to start your own business. That's the book that helped me. Because when no one wanted to help me, when I was reaching out to people, everyone, everyone wanted to be pricks because they thought they were above me. I thought, you know what, good. Like, I started reaching out to people. When I, when, when I wanted to do my website, I reached out to people who no one wanted to help me. Or they'll tell you, yeah, I'm going to help you, I'm going to get back to you, but then they don't. Then, my, then Junior told me, you know what, find out who's going to help you when you do, do like, work with them. If they're not going to help you, block them, delete them. I just started getting, are you going to help? No, I cool. Block, I started blocking numbers, locked myself in the room. I learned how to like, create and design a site. I've done my own website. I've done everything, email marketing. I've done everything myself. Then I got nominated for my first award. Then I got nominated for three awards. I won one, then this year I got nominated for four award, Entrepreneur of the Year, Best New Business, and Best Small Business, then Best Business for Young People. And I thought to myself, rock, and that's for someone that didn't go to college, or I didn't like, get that high education, because everything starts with a vision, right? If you can see it, you can achieve it. Who agrees with me? Yeah. 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 You can see it, you can achieve it. So you have to forget what people tell you that you can't, what you can't do, or what you can't achieve. Because when, you, when you're like up late nights doing work or you're doing them long hours in the office, yeah, no one's there with you to help you. The only person that's there is God. And that day, that, the day that God comes down and tells me, Ernest, you can't do it, that's when I'll stop. <laughs> so, don't forget what people tell you, oh, you can't, you can't do it, you can't, you can't achieve it. If you can see it, then you can achieve it. So if you've got a goal, you've got a vision, you've got a dream, write it down. Then lock yourself in your room for like 30 minutes, close your eyes, then picture yourself living your dream without walking in your dream. If you want to own a business, just picture yourself owning a business and come back to the present and start working towards it. It sounds easy, but it's not easy.